Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 So today's topic is snake bite. Today's topic is snake snake bite. So at the end of the class, these are the learning objectives for today's class. At the end of the class, BSc nursing third year students should be able to firstly name the four poisonous species of snakes in India. Name the four poisonous species of snakes in India. The second learning objective. Describe the morphological features of poisonous snakes. Thirdly, describe clinical features of snake bite. And fourthly, discuss treatment of snake bite poisoning. So these are the learning objectives for today's class. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There are 3,500 species of snakes in the world, out of which around 350 are poisonous. There are about 330 species in India, out of which around 70 are venomous. So not all snakes are poisonous. That is why we should not be unnecessarily alarmed when there is a snake bite. Okay, it may be non-poisonous. So regarding the morphology, of a venomous snake, that is a poisonous snake. What differentiates a poisonous snake from a non-poisonous snake? Okay, so usually, uh, you know, these poisonous snakes secrete poisonous venom. Okay, that is the secretion in the parotid gland. Can you see this gland here? This is the parotid gland of the snake. Okay, so this is injected through the fangs. These fangs are the modified long teeth. Okay, usually present in the maxilla, in the upper jaw. Modified long teeth. Can you see here? So this is the, yes, the parotid gland which produces toxic venom. And this is injected, this is secreted through the, so this is the main feature which differentiates a poisonous from a non-poisonous snake. So snake venom, what is the snake venom? It is a clear amber colored fluid when fresh. So this is amber. You know in pharmacology you have those amber colored bottles for storing medicines, isn't it? Have you seen amber colored bottles? They are brownish. Okay, so this is the amber color, brownish. It is light brown in color. Clear amber colored fluid when fresh. This is snake venom. It is the toxic saliva secreted by modified parotid glands of the snake. And snake venom comprises toxins such as low molecular weight proteins and peptides, enzymes like proteinases, hydrolases, transaminase and cholinesterase, and also agglutinins and proteolysins. So these are the constituents of snake venom. And these usually produce the toxic effects which are seen when snake venom is injected through a snake bite. Okay, when snake venom is injected into the human body through a snake bite, the manifestations are due to all these constituents. So you can see over here, this is the upper jaw, this is the lower jaw. Okay, this is a, what is this? What is this? Long modified tooth, it is called the fang. fang, yes. Okay, and this is the amber colored snake venom. Poisoning by snake venom is called ophitoxemia. There is a term for poisoning by snake venom, it is called ophitoxemia. But in clinical terms, in clinical parlance, we use the term snake bite. Okay, we commonly use the term snake bite or snake bite poisoning or envenomation, snake by envenomation. So venomous snakes in India. So in India, there are mainly four poisonous species. Four poisonous species. That is cobra, crate, sawskill viper and Russell's viper. Okay, out of which cobra and crates are neurotoxic. 
that is they act primarily on the central nervous system and viper that is soskir viper and russell's viper are hemotoxic they act on the blood or the hematological system and within brackets you see the the botanical or biological name of the snake you can see the biological species okay naja naja for cobra bongara ceruleus great this is the scientific uh, name echis carinatus for soskil viper and vipera russeli for russell's viper so features of venomous venomous snakes features of venomous snakes so as i told you the four poisonous species are cobra great Russell's viper and saw-tail viper. So this is a cobra. The first picture you see here is a cobra. It has an oval head. The head is oval with small scales, and there is a spectacle mark on the dorsal surface. This is a cobra. This is a great steel blue body, steel blue body, and white marks, white markings, white parallel markings on the body. This is a crate. This is a Russell's viper. Can you see the head is triangular? Okay, in cobra the head is oval with small scales, but in viper the head is triangular. Okay, the head is triangular and there's an arrow-shaped mark. You can see over here on the dorsum of the head. Okay, and all along there, are, you know these. diamond shaped markings okay diamond shaped markings okay throughout the body and you can see the tail is tapering the tail is tapering this is a saw scale viper okay you can see these markings on the body oval shaped markings on the body okay so the tail is short and tapering in viper tail is short and tapering in viper okay and in the cobra you can see a hood in the neck as i showed you just now this is a the neck is expanded into a hood can you see here this is the neck is expanded into a hood and this hood has a spectacle mark okay that is why it's called either binocellate if there are two spectacle marks or monocellate if there's a single spectacle mark that is characteristic of cobra and here tail is short and tapering in the viper Okay, the head is triangular, tail is uh, tapering, and you can see these marks. Okay, wavy marks across the body, and the head also has an arrow-shaped mark. Okay, with the apex pointing towards the uh, snout. And the main feature of a poisonous snake is the presence of fangs, modified long teeth in the upper jaw. So, clinical features. Clinical features if a person is bitten by a snake which is neurotoxic for example a cobra or a crate there will be predominantly neurotoxic features because the venom of cobra and crate acts on the central nervous system so locally there will be mild pain and tenderness presence of blisters a slight ooze from the site of the bite and swelling and the regional lymph nodes are enlarged because snake venom travels through the lymphatics there will also be systemic features of vomiting ptosis that is drooping of the eyelid blurring of vision of thalmoplegia paresthesia headache muscle pain paralysis of neck and facial muscles person is unable to open the mouth and it can also act on the respiratory muscles it can act on the diaphragm and respiratory intercostal muscles causing respiratory paralysis so these are the features of a neurotoxic bite that is a cobra or a crate bite now if a person is bitten by a snake like a viper the person will show predominantly hemotoxic features 
so it acts on the blood and blood vessels okay so locally at the site of the bite it will be swelling presence of blisters and bruising along the path of superficial lymphatics and there will be persistent bleeding from the site of the bite persistent bleeding from the site of the bite the swelling in this case will be much more than a neurotoxic bite the swelling will be much more and also persistent bleeding okay in a neurotoxic bite there may just be a slight ooze but in a hemotoxic bite there is persistent bleeding and systemic features of a hemotoxic bite bleeding manifestations there will be blood in urine epistaxis that is bleeding from the nose bleeding from the gums epistaxis subarachnoid and intracerebral hemorrhage intravascular hemolysis hemoglobinuria hypotension because you know of blood loss the blood pressure will be depressed or decreased tachycardia and because of that there will be increased pulse rate and finally renal failure or renal shutdown because of decreased renal perfusion so these are the systemic manifestations of a hemotoxic bite there will be predominantly bleeding manifestations so what are the signs of envenomation see sometimes there may be just local features like slight uh, you know swelling and pain at the side of the bite but if the venom is absorbed into the systemic circulation then there will be systemic manifestations signs of envenomation that means the poison or the venom has uh, you know made its way into the systemic circulation and has been absorbed by the body okay so mild symptoms you know mainly just local effects moderate symptoms they are both local and systemic effects and moderate laboratory changes in severe envenomation the entire bitten limb is affected and serious systemic effects that is bleeding manifestations or if it is a neurotoxic by tussis of thalmopegia paralysis of you know facial muscles respiratory muscles and very significant laboratory changes sometimes the person may even require ventilatory support because of respiratory difficulty so these are signs of envenomation so in clinical practice sometimes uh, you cannot uh, you know uh, really differentiate between a neurotoxic and hematotoxic or hemotoxic bite there may be clinical features uh, of both hemotoxic and neurotoxic there may be both features combined in clinical practice okay it is not always a uh, you know the typical textbook description in practice so this chart shows the general symptoms of snake bite central symptoms you know the moment the person is bitten by the snake and the venom has been injected there will be dizziness and fainting sensation increased thirst headache and uh, if you know it is a neurotoxic bite then there will be drooping of the eyelid or thalmopegia this will result in blurring of vision because of the paralysis of the eye muscles muscles of the eye then systemic features like fever and severe pain especially at the site of the bite then the pulse there will be rapid pulse and low blood pressure and person may go into shock if there is significant blood loss the person may go into a systemic shock there will be breathing difficulty as i explained and at the site of the bite you can see here at the site of the bite bleeding presence of fang marks you can see these fang marks okay because the snake has bitten the person here okay fang marks are the bite marks of the snake and there will be discoloration around the site of the bite swelling and also oozing or bleeding then other sites of the skin there will be bleeding spots because of deranged clotting mechanism or deranged coagulation mechanism normal coagulation does not take place so there will be bleeding manifestations bleeding spots present in the pleura and pericardium and other areas of the skin numbness and tingling sensation then 
It also affects the muscles, causing convulsions, loss of coordination and weakness. And gastric symptoms like nausea and vomiting. Intestinal symptoms like diarrhea. So these are the general manifestations of snake bite. And as I said earlier, the clinical picture may be a combination of neurotoxic and hemotoxic features in practice. Can anybody tell me what these are? Can you identify? What are these? Yes? Fang marks. Fang marks. Very good. So, fang marks. Okay. And which are the usual sites of snake bite? Which are the usual sites? Which are the affected areas normally? Legs. Yes, very good. Legs and hands. Okay, this is because, you know, especially in villages, people, you know, may walk in, uh, in the dark. And, uh, you know, they don't have the habit of wearing shoes in villages. So, you know, they may answer the call of nature, go out in the dark and get bitten by a snake. Okay, so the usual sites are the limbs, the hands and the feet, the legs and the limbs. arms. Yes, limbs. Very good. So, this is a bitten limb showing presence of fang marks and discoloration. Discoloration around the site of the bite. Okay. And what is this? Can you explain this uh, clinical feature which you see here? Swelling. Yes, swelling. You can see. Okay. Marked swelling of the bitten limb. So, this is uh, most likely to be a hemotoxic bite. Okay. A bite by a viper. Marked swelling. Pain at the side of the bite. Persistent bleeding from the side of the bite and other bleeding manifestations like bleeding from the nose and mouth. So what is the treatment of snake bite? So, see, anybody gets alarmed when you know you've been bitten by a snake, isn't it? You may be so scared that sometimes, you know, the patient faints or passes out because of fear or anxiety. Okay, so as doctors and nurses, this is the first thing that we should, uh, you know, reassure the patient. Okay, try to calm the patient down. Okay, try to allay anxiety. Okay, calm down the patient. So, reassurance is very important because the snake may not be a poisonous one. Okay, the patient should not be fearful. And of course, immobilization of the bitten limb. The affected limb should be immobilized. Then once the patient reaches the hospital, you can give injection tetanus toxoid, 0.5 ml intramuscularly. The bite site can be cleaned with an antiseptic like povidone iodine. Sloughed and necrotic areas may be excised. That is, you know, a surgical, you know, debridement that you do removing the necrotic tissue. Okay, using sterile precautions and covered with saline dressings. And pain medication and antibiotics as appropriate. If there is severe pain, uh, painkillers like paracetamol can be given. But antibiotics are not given routinely. Antibiotics are usually avoided unless they are absolutely necessary. So the patient has to be observed for at least 24 hours. Sometimes what happens is, you know, patient seems to be better after 6 hours. Then, uh, you know, tendency is, oh, discharge the patient. But the patient can deteriorate after going back home. So the general practice is keep the patient under observation for at least 24 hours. Okay, if the patient is admitted in casualty, keep the patient under observation. Even if patient seems clinically better, do not discharge the patient yet. But keep him under observation for at least 24 hours. Monitor the vitals, pulse, BP, respiration, temperature. These should be monitored round the clock. And laboratory parameters. So bleeding, this should also be monitored, whether there's any bleeding from the side of the bite. Usually, uh, you know, nurses make a chart, isn't it? You make a chart where you write all your observations, isn't it? You make columns, you know, pulse, BP, respiration, temperature, then any bleeding, bleeding, plus minus or bleeding from the side of the bite. Okay, and then whether there's any swelling of the bitten limb, plus minus, present or absent, yes or no, you can write. Mm. So you make a chart like that. 
and the urine output is it 500 ml or 200 ml you know in the past or oh. okay and then the ecg and abg arterial blood gas analysis but these can be monitored at regular intervals apply pressure bandages over venipuncture sites to prevent oozing because there is a bleeding tendency these uh, you know uh, whatever injection you make that can be a site for bleeding okay so even if you making a you know you're introducing an iv line or you injecting the patient injecting some drugs or some medicines into the patient these can be sites of bleeding because the patient has a bleeding tendency okay so these sites should be plugged okay pressure bandages can be applied over these sites where you have uh, you know uh, put in a needle or you have introduced some uh, you know uh, treatment measures you might have introduced a syringe or a needle so these should be plugged to prevent oozing anti snake venom is available in india okay anti snake venom this is an antidote against snake venom it is called asv or anti snake venom it is available in india but it is not given routinely it is given only according to specific criteria okay and the usual criteria is when there are signs of envenomation when there are signs of envenomation so uh, the, this is marketed as yes, snake venom anti serum just called okay so you have uh, you know some companies like serum institute of india in pune hafka institute mumbai these produce or manufacture the snake venom so there are some things which you should not do for snake bite okay so uh, sometimes uh, you know in villages or in the outskirts in the peripheries we have a tendency to do something for the bite which may be more harmful which may, which may do more harm than good so we should be careful before initiating these kind of treatments which can be harmful for the patient okay for example you can see over here this is cross that means these are things you should not do okay what not to do tie in a tourniquet this should not be done you know in very old books you find there's a reference you know uh, you should tie a tourniquet to present uh, to prevent absorption of the poison but that is wrong okay tourniquet should not be uh tight at all then incision and suction you know sometimes there's a belief that if you uh incise you make an incision you make a cut and suck out the poison the poison will come out okay this also was an old belief but this is not true it can cause more harm than good and it can introduce infection especially if you're using instruments which are not sterile it can introduce infection and it can do more harm than good local application of ice is not recommended it is not at all helpful for snake bite and applying electric shock is also not helpful okay it is not to be it should not be done okay so do not tie a tourniquet do not do incision and suction do not apply ice at the side of the bite and do not use electric shock to treat snake bite okay these are things which should not be done is it clear is yes, it clear okay yes sir yes sir okay so uh, for signs of envenomation you see there are clinical signs as well as laboratory signs okay so among the clinical signs okay i have not mentioned the clinical signs here but clinical signs of envenomation are prolonged hypotension or marked neurological signs like you know ptosis you know persistent uh, of thalmopegia or paralysis of the respiratory muscles okay any signs of involvement of the neurological system should alert the clinician or the nurse that uh, there is a possible envenomation that means the poison has been absorbed into the systemic circulation prolonged hypotension you know prolonged drop in the blood pressure bleeding manifestations okay persistent bleeding from the mouth nose okay and other orifices these should alert the nurse and the clinician 
Now there is a possible envenomation or absorption of snake venom. And among the laboratory signs, this is very useful. It is a bedside test which can be done by anybody, nurse, doctor. Okay, so this is called 20, 20 minute whole blood clotting time. Okay, WBCT stands for whole blood clotting time. Okay, so what you have to do is you draw 10 ml of the patient's blood in a plain vial. Okay, you can draw 10 ml of blood of the patient's blood in a vial, a clean vial. And you observe. Okay, after 20 minutes, you tilt the bottle or you tilt the vial. Okay, tilt the vial. If it has clotted, it will not move, isn't it? But if it has not clotted, it will start flowing. Okay, so if it is not clotted after 20 minutes, it is a sign of uh, envenomation. Okay, it is a sign of envenomation. That means the poison has been absorbed in the, into the systemic circulation. So this is a very useful test which can be done at the bedside. Okay, so please remember 20 minute whole blood clotting test. Okay, 20 minute WBCT or whole blood clotting test. This is very useful. Okay, because the normal clotting time is, uh, you know, within a few minutes, isn't it? Within 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, the blood should clot. Uh, you must have noticed, you know, when you cut your finger or when you prick your finger and blood uh, flows out. Okay, it flows for some time, maybe for five minutes or so it will flow. But after that, it slowly starts to clot. Isn't it? This is because of the normal clotting mechanism of the body. Isn't it? So what happens in snake bite, especially if it's a hemotoxic bite, like a viper. Viper bite, the clotting mechanism will be deranged. Okay, the clotting mechanism is deranged. So the blood does not clot. Okay, this is a sign of envenomation. Then, significant limb swelling is also suggestive of envenomation. Significant limb swelling, which does not subside. Okay, and neurological signs that I've already mentioned. Okay, difficulty in breathing, ptosis, drooping of the eyelid. Okay, so when there are signs of envenomation, anti-snake venom can be given. Okay, you can start with 8 to 10 vials. 8 to 10 vials over 1 hour. It is given as an intravenous infusion. Okay, it is given as an intravenous infusion. Okay, so the maximum dose which can be given for a hemotoxic bite is 30 vials. For a neurotoxic bite, 20 vials. Okay, so to start with, 8 to 10 vials, after 6 hours, you can observe the clinical condition of the patient. Observe the clinical parameters. If there is no improvement, you can give an additional 8 to 10 vials. Okay, but the maximum dose should not exceed 30, 30 vials for a hemotoxic bite and 20 vials for a neurotoxic bite. This is the guideline. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, just like anything else, you know, there are people... Yes, okay. There are people who can be allergic to the anti-snake venom. Okay, some of us are allergic to medicines, isn't it? We cannot take certain medicines because we are allergic to them. So, similarly, some people can be allergic to uh, the anti-snake venom. Okay. So, in such cases, you have to do a skin test. Okay. And this skin test is done by injecting 0.02 ml of a 1 by 10 dilution of antivenom in normal saline intradermally. Okay, so you inject a dilute uh, dose, a you know, very small dose of dilute venom, antivenom. Very small dose of dilute antivenom intradermally. Okay, after 30 minutes, if there is a wheel like this, articarial wheel, then the sign is positive. That means this person is sensitive to snake venom. Okay, this person may be hypersensitive to snake, uh, uh, sorry, anti-snake venom to the treatment. Okay. So this is a skin test which is done in people who could be hypersensitive to the treatment to anti-snake venom. 
So yes, I'm mentioning some of the reactions for anti-venom. People who uh, have adverse reactions to anti-snake venom. You know, just like uh, for every drug, isn't it? You have indications, contraindications. You have uh, adverse effects of the drug, side effects of a particular drug. So every drug, although you know the usefulness is there, it has a potential benefit, but it also has side effects. Okay, so these are the side effects of anti-snake venom. Okay, it's useful. No doubt it's very useful. But it also has side effects in certain people. Okay, so uh, the first possible adverse effect could be an anaphylactic reaction. Anaphylactic reaction, especially in hypersensitive individuals. And this can occur within 10 minutes to 1 hour of starting the anti-snake venom infusion. So, you know, doctors and nurses should be alert to all these possible reactions. This is characterized by cough, urticaria, tachycardia, hypotension, bronchospasm, okay, difficulty in breathing, bronchospasm, and angioedema, swelling, swelling of the face, swelling of the lips, okay, and the dangerous uh, part may be swelling of the larynx or swelling of the laryngeal tissues, which can cause uh, difficulty in breathing. So this can be treated with adrenaline. Okay, anaphylactic reaction can be treated with adrenaline, 0.5 ml of a 1 by 1000 solution intramuscularly and an antihistaminic like peritone, 10 milligrams intravenously or intramuscularly. Okay, so these should be available. These are essential drugs which must be available in the casualty. Wherever we are treating a patient of snake bite with anti-snake venom, these drugs should be available. You should have adrenaline and you should have peritone or any antihistaminic. Okay, so in case of a possible anaphylactic reaction, the patient can be treated immediately with adrenaline and antihistaminic. Okay, adrenaline is potentially life saving in such situations. Okay, because as I said in angioedema, the person, you know, because of bronchospasm, the person may go into respiratory arrest. Okay, swelling of the larynx and bronchospasm, the patient may go into respiratory arrest. So, adrenaline is potentially life-saving in such situations. Then there can be a pyrogenic reaction within one or two hours. The patient may have fever, chills, shivering and sweating. Okay. And serum sickness after seven days. Okay, this is not very common. Okay. So you can see over here what happens in an anaphylactic reaction. Okay, there is loss of consciousness. Urtica urticarial wheels. You can see over here these urticarial wheels. Okay, or skin rashes. Swelling of tongue. Swelling of tongue. Inability to swallow. Rapid swelling of the throat tissues leading to respiratory difficulty. Okay, and if the airway is obliterated, then there will be respiratory arrest. So now complications of snake bite per se. We have talked about the possible side effects or adverse effects of anti-snake venom. Now we'll talk about complications of snake bite per se. Okay, if you know a snake bite is untreated, what can happen? So intracompartmental syndrome. Okay, uh, this is the swelling of muscles in tight facial compartments, pain and swelling and tenseness of the limb. Okay, so there can be pain, swelling and tenseness of the limb. Okay, this is called intracompartmental syndrome. So this can be treated with fasciotomy. It's a surgical procedure, fasciotomy, once the coagulation profile is normal. Okay, then another complication of snake bite is coagulation abnormalities, which we are all aware of. Okay, coagulation abnormalities, the bleeding manifestations. And this can be treated by fresh whole blood, fresh frozen plasma or cryoprecipitate. Then hypotensive shock. Hypotensive shock is another complication of snake bite. This can be treated by anti-snake venom, 
Okay. Shock is one of the indications for anti snake venom administration. Foot and elevation. You know, the foot end of the bed is raised. And treatment with vasopressors like dopamine. Then, in case of renal failure, renal failure is another complication of snake bite because of, uh, you know, low blood pressure, low perfusion, low renal perfusion. It can be renal shutdown or renal failure, where the urine output decreases to less than 400 milliliters in 24 hours. This can be treated by diuretics, dopamine and strict fluid balance. Input-output chart should be maintained. Then another complication, especially in a neurotoxic bite, is neurotoxicity. So, this can be treated by neostigmin. Okay. This can be treated by neostigmin. But you first give a small dose to see if the response is good or not. First give a small dose of neostigmin. If the response is good, then it can be continued half hourly for the next eight hours. Okay, so how do you monitor the response? You see, you look for the, uh, you know, muscle. If the muscle uh, stiffness and pain decrease, then it shows that the response is good. Or the tosis also improves, you know, drooping of the lid, that improves. That is also a sign that there is improvement. The patient is responding to a neostigmin treatment. So, neostigmin can be given along with atropine. Atropine is given to block the muscarinic effects of neostigmin. Respiratory failure, another complication of snake bite, respiratory failure. So, take care to maintain the airway and the position of the patient, positioning of the patient here, the head should be lower than the rest of the body and the patient should be placed in a semi-prone position, semi-prone position. And in such cases, you may need to intubate the patient and maintenance by uh, ventilation, mechanical ventilation. Okay, so uh, the patient may need respiratory support. Okay, intubation and mechanical ventilation. So what are the medical legal aspects of snake bite? Deaths due to, due to alleged snake bite are sent for post-mortem examination. Okay, usually they are sent for post-mortem examination. You want to know the exact cause of death. And uh, in some states like uh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, there is a provision of uh, providing compensation in these kind of deaths, deaths due to snake bite. But it has to be certified. It has to be certified in the post-mortem report. Okay, that death was due to snake bite. Okay, that is why these cases are sent for post-mortem examination. Then post-mortem is also done to rule out foul play and death from other causes. Okay, so death may have uh, been caused due to uh, some other reason like uh, mechanical asphyxia and poisoning. But there is a, I mean the patient party come with a story that oh, this death was due to snake bite. So to rule out again, post-mortem examination has to be done. So on the whole, most deaths due to snake bite are accidental. Accidental bite by a snake. Okay. A uh, person, uh, especially in the villages, goes out in the dark, bitten by a snake. So it is purely accidental. Okay. So is it clear to all of you? Is it clear to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any questions? Yes, so the anti-snake venom that we have, the anti-snake venom ASB that is available, uh, in India is effective against these four species of poisonous snakes. Okay. It contains the antibodies of these four poisonous snakes. Okay. It is the antiserum of these four poisonous snakes. Yes. Anybody wanted to ask something? Yes. Please go ahead if you want to ask something. Can you hear me? Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am. What are the home management for snake bite? Home management. Yeah, home management, you should reassure the patient, but then, you know, it is always better to take the patient to hospital because if your very shed is non-poisonous, 
patient can be managed at home. But if it is a poisonous snake, if you know it's a poisonous snake, or uh, you know you're residing in a place, the patient is residing in an area where there are lots of poisonous snakes like cobra, viper, then it is better to take the patient to hospital. Okay, otherwise patient may suddenly deteriorate and then uh, you won't be able to handle it at home. Na? Okay. Only if you're very sure it's not poisonous. Yeah. Only if you're very sure it's not poisonous, then you can manage at home. Otherwise, it's better to take the patient to the nearest health facility. Ma'am, uh, why, why uh, is it mentioned the electric shock in what not to do? Ma'am, do they practice? Ah, yes. It has been found that people practice it in the past. Okay. So, one thing I forgot to mention, if at all you want to wrap the limb, okay, that uh, bandage, there's a special bandage called a Sutherland wrap, which can be used. Okay. So the entire uh, bitten limb is wrapped in that bandage and that bandage should be neither too tight nor too loose. You should be able to admit a finger underneath the bandage. Okay, so, so the entire bitten limb is wrapped in a Sutherland wrap, okay, along with a splint. Okay, if at all you want to wrap the limb, uh, you can use a Sutherland wrap. It's like an elastic bandage, okay, and the pressure should be enough to occlude uh, just the lymphatics, but should not occlude the arterial circulation. Because if you occlude or if you block the arterial circulation, if the bandage is too tight, it can block the arteries and this can cause gangrene of the limb. Okay, because of poor blood supply. So you should be very careful while uh, applying that wrap, Sutherland wrap, the special elastic bandage. Okay, otherwise all the other things which I mentioned are harmful. Incision and suction, applying eyes, okay, even tying a tourniquet, these are dangerous, should not be done. Yes, people were using them in the past, that is why, you know, specifically it's mentioned that it should not be done. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Yes, we still have some time, if anybody wants to uh, clarify their doubts. Yes, anybody else? Any comments? Ma'am, uh, how many hours will you take a person to like, how many hours? I'm not able to hear you. How many hours? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how many hours will it take a uh, person to take uh, die with poison? Uh, it depends. It depends. With treatment, usually that is why treatment is very important here. And uh, you know, you should be alert for those uh, clinical signs. Okay. Uh, like in Mekha. Yeah. In Meghalaya, so, not so many deaths are reported due to snake bite. bite. Meghalaya, uh -huh. not reported very often, snake bite. But in other states, yes, deaths due to snake bite do occur. And they get compensation also. So maybe, you know, uh, within a few days, person can deteriorate. And, uh, you know, fatal period can be a few days. Again, depending on the uh, clinical uh, features, the manifestations or the complications. Okay. Sometimes they survive up to a week also. And then they die because of complications. Okay, sometimes a person can die within one or two days due to snake bite. So can you name the uh, four? Can you name? Yes, yes. Yes, please go ahead. Now why we should not tie the tourniquet? Ah, I told you, no? Because why we should not tie the tourniquet? Yeah, if you tie the tourniquet too tightly, then it can block the arteries and this can cause poor blood supply to the limb and leading to gangrene, necrosis, it can cause more complications. Okay, so tourniquet should not be used. Rather, an elastic okay. bandage, Sutherland wrap is safer, a Sutherland wrap or an elastic bandage, that is safer, but that also should be adjusted. Uh, you know, in a very, uh, uh, in an appropriate way, so that it's not too tight, not too loose. It blocks only the lymphatics. It does not block the arterial circulation. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome. Okay, if there are no more questions, I think I'll end today's class. Thank you very much.